Hello, I'm Rips, and welcome to another Linux gaming video. We're back in Minecraft, Minecraft, Feed the Beast, Minecraft. You'll notice that I noticed that last time I had a communist skin from the anime Gurren Lagann, and this time I've customized it to be a little more fitting to me. And if you've actually seen my channel page, you'll notice that the background is a uh, character like that, and now it fits this. Just a little thing, just a nice little thing. Makes my character a little bit more original than just copying some anime. Anyway, as I won the, I haven't done too much since the last time here, but I have done a lot of refurnishing and I'll show you what I have done to my Minecraft world since I, I last made a video. As you can see, as I, I've set up a central staircase going to the top, and I'll show you that in a second, but first I want to show you this main room. This, this is the first floor, and this floor is going to be um, basically my storage room. You see I've already set up a bunch of um, um, barrels here to be stored here, and I'm going to set up an automated um, system here that will automatically distribute everything I need into either chests or barrels as needed using red power pipes. Um, I'm kind of far away from getting that done right now, but it'll be. Um, right here is my little, um, I guess the porch or the backyard. It's suspended in the air. I kind of like it. I might put something here like a tree farm later, but in the meantime, it's just basically um, for looks and I got all these torches here to prevent mobs from spawning. Over here I have my potato farm because I need food and potatoes are a pretty decent food source. And up here I've kind of refurnished the stairway a bit and I put a door to the second floor here. And over here I'm, gonna, I'm setting up my thalm altar. I'm going to put my craft stuff in this little room here. You see I put a little nether rack. I'm going to put some there. Um, the big old um, crafting, I don't even remember what it's called, um, in the center here. And I'm going to put um, crucibles in each corner and I have little spaces so I can put um, other things and yeah. And I have a little lighting using these um, quartz crystals. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I haven't really gotten involved at all in craft, but at least I'm preparing for it. Um, Back into the house, you can see I put a spiral staircase going all the way to the top, and I've actually um, color coded the floors now, so each floor has its own color. The, the white's always on the edge on each every on the whole tower, but each floor has its own color. Like the first floor is red, you'll see from outside. The second floor is green. Um, third floor is blue, and the last floor is all black. I might change that later, but right now it works. I plan on putting um, a red. This is the top of the tower right now, but I plan on putting a red power um, windmill at the top. I think that'll look good, and I can get some blue electricity. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with blue electricity, besides probably set up an alloy furnace. But you know, you need an alloy furnace. Um, let's close the door so I don't get any mobs in here. I don't think any mobs can spawn up here. I think I've lit up the place pretty well. Pretty well. But, you never know. Um, and then I built... Now, if you notice right here, there's no pathway down like there was before. There's no little cliff here. I didn't like it. So I kind of filled it in and made it look more like a proper mountainside over there. And um, what I di instead did is I built a little um, um, jump tube down all the way down. Now I have several floors. The first floor from the tower goes into this little nook here underneath the overhang of the tower. And here I can access my nether portal. I'll probably set up a twilight portal like probably like right here or something. So my portals will be right on this section. And then continuing down will access the boiler room. Now this is very incomplete so far, but I have plans to set up two boilers, one here and one there. And I've already been experimenting with um, creating biofuel, as I have a fermenter right here that's that makes biomass. See, it's already making it. Wow, that's working pretty good. I already got tons, that compost really runs a while. Now, I plan on replacing the compost with um, mulch from a moistener, 
but that requires a somewhat automated setup and a lot, a little bit of work. So I haven't gotten to that yet, and compost is easy enough to make right now. Um, I got a a Coke oven right here that's already full of creosote oil. Um, this is probably what I'll be using to power one of the boilers and I'll try and use biofuel on the other until I have a more efficient biofuel plant. Um, the coke can also be um, just basically a good fuel source. And this right here you can see is a sugarcane farm. This will be, at, this will be the, um, the source of fuel or um, the organic matter I use to make my biofuel. This is pretty small. I plan on making it bigger as I go forward that utilize the most space possible so I can make the most biofuel possible. But it, this does what I need it to do. Um, now what I plan on doing is I have a, I just have a normal um, steam engine right here that um, you know, you just need water then you have to supply coal and that's not ideal. I'm not, I'm planning on having replaced with a biogas engine. All I have to do is put in one bucket of lava and then some biogas and then the biofuel and it'll run up, run automatically. This technically right here isn't biofuel yet. Right here what I'm making is biomass, which can run in biogas engines. But if I want to actually, um, I can probably, I, I, you know, if I want to put in my boilers, I have to actually convert it to biofuel. Now biofuel requires, um, I put it into a, yeah, you know what? I don't remember what it's called, but um, it, it, it basically, it, it converts, um, biomass in the fuel and it's uh, another forestry thing so that'll work and once I have that all set up I'll have infinite well not infinite but a, a good a lot of um, um, industrial craft EU's electricity and um, minecraft jewels which is um, used to run power engines and stuff like that so once this boiler room is complete and up and running it will be epic and it and no, you know, I know what you're saying. If you've ever played these type of mod packs and stuff, you say, like, why don't I just put a bunch of time and effort into making a bunch of solar cells? And I could, and that would get a good bunch of energy, but it, uh, I don't like that. It seems too free. I mean, I know that Greg Tech made them um, making solar panels and stuff like that a lot harder to make, like you need iridium and stuff to get any of the decent ones. But you know what? I, I like the, the thought that, you know, you like this is almost realistic like in order to make fuel you have to actually harvest some raw resources and like stuff like that you grow some fuel and it's still going to be renewable it's not like i'm just going to be consuming things outright i'm going to be growing basically sugarcane for free and that could be converted to fuel and i know it's just basically i'm making myself a big complicated mess but eh what are you gonna do now going down to the bottom floor is basically just a, a tunnel and I just realized I'm low on fuel food because there might be some mobs down out here I don't wanna I've lit this place up pretty good so even at night there shouldn't be too many mobs but you never know when a creeper is gonna creep up on you and this was my old base and it's been cleaned out oh so for this chest mm, I'll clean that up a little bit later um Yep, not much else. I haven't been playing too much. I've been playing most of the other games lately. I have been coming back here every once in a while and just working a little bit on that tower. And I think it looks gorgeous. It looks just the way I want it. Um, the real the hard part now is um, getting my um, system set up. Now I've already been to Nether and I've gotten some glowstone stuff so I plan on making myself a jetpack pretty soon. But the problem I'm having right now the jetpack requires um, a bunch of um, industrial craft objects which require rubber and I have wandered for long periods of time and I seem to be no near, near nowhere that has um, rubber trees. I've been just surviving off of burning um, slime and furnaces and it's I'm getting low on slime it's hard to come by I mean Unless I'm near a swamp, I'm pretty in, but I think swamps are loaded with rubber trees anyway. I need to find a swamp, that's what I need to do. I need to find a swamp so I can get some resources to make rubber. Once I got rubber, things should be a, lot, a little bit easier and I can start getting things underway a lot quicker. 
but I'm kind of on hold because of that. I, I only have a few pieces of slime that I can cook into rubber and I'm not sure that's gonna get me everything I need. So I'm gonna see if I can get a jetpack. A jetpack will make traveling around a lot easier and then I can search a lot more. So, yep, I just thought you guys wanted an update. I didn't really plan on recording any building this episode. So, thank, just wanted to keep you up to date and what's going on, and maybe I'll show you next time. I did find, um, that reminds me. While I was exploring some caves, I found an end portal. I found a, a stronghold. It was about over here somewhere awfully close to where I was so I've already pretty much conquered the stronghold but I haven't gone to the end yet because well I am nowhere near prepared to be taking on the ender dragon although it might be a good tactic if I can come up make myself an ender chest or an ender pouch with an ender chest and then just head off there to just kill a bunch of endermen because the ender pearls are valuable and I'm gonna need it for a bunch of stuff later on especially if I want to use some of the test racks and stuff like that so I can teleport items and liquids long distances. That would be useful. But right now, um, I'm kind of um, stuck trying to eke by. I really, I think the next plan is I'm going to have to go and find um, some rubber. I really need rubber to really progress much further in what I'm doing. Um, Greg's tech has made doing a lot of things very hard unless you use his custom items and stuff like that. And he's made a lot of the recipes harder and I need rubber to make some of the industrial craft items. So that'll be my main test. Oh, there's a zombie over there. Hmm. But, yep, this is how it's going so far. Let me know in the comments what you think about um, how my tower's working or what things I should add or change about it. It's still not com complete yet. I mean, I definitely want to have something on top. Maybe I'll make a spire. Maybe I'll make a little pointy roof. I'm not quite sure what I'm thinking at the moment. Um, and give me some ideas for how to do the Thomcraft um, room. I kind of like this little overhang kind of just sitting to the side here. But, I mean, if you have some cool ideas, lay it on me. I I'd love to hear it. Um, or if you have any ideas on how I can get um, some sources of rubber a lot easier. I mean, I've searched quite far and I am pretty much stuck in kind of a mountain's plains everywhere I go with no rubber trees anywhere. So if you if you can think of a, a an easier way of getting to some place where I can get rubber or how I can farm slimes easier, I'd love to hear it. So I guess that'll be it for now. See you next time. Bye.